Good morning. Hello. What do I say after that? Welcome back to my channel, and if you're new, hi. My name is Grace, I'm an eighth generation farmer in Kentucky, and this is Gavin. I'm a first generation farmer from Missouri. Today we are at Compton Dairy, which is a local dairy farm in Kentucky, and we're really excited because neither one of us come from any kind of dairy background. No livestock, really, other than I worked in a hog barn in high school, but we're excited to get the grand tour of a dairy facility see where your milk comes from. We just pulled in the driveway and I can already tell this is not your grandpa's dairy farm. This is high tech, it's new. There's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of technology. It's very clean and well taken care of and that's obvious just by looking at it. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm here with Ben and Tony Compton, and they're gonna give us a little bit of a history of the farm. Can you talk about how it got started and when? Well, we started milking on this farm in 1983. So cool. that was a long time ago. At that time, we had about uh, probably 25. So what have you grown to now? We're a little over 200 right now. Do you have any other crops or any other livestock other than dairy cattle? A little bit of grain, not much. Mm -hmm. Is it mainly for feed or? Uh, well, we chop corn silage and wheat for the cows, and then we have just a little bit that we sell, corn and beans. So now, compared to when you first started, what are some major differences that have made things more efficient? Well, when I started here in, uh, in the 80s, uh, we had a single two walkthrough, where you had two cows come in the barn, you milked them until you had them out. And then in 90, uh, we built a new parlor, it's a double eight herringbone. And then uh, 2015, we put the robots in. Do you prefer the newer technology, or do you kind of wish you could go back to the way that it was? I like the new technology. The new technology is the cows do better, but when it tears up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's great when it works. <laughs> right. Yeah, just like anything. Speaking of technology, we're going to talk a little bit about these cool collars that I didn't even know existed. We call them activity monitors. They keep up with their rumination, which is, we go off that to see if their stomachs are working right. And they know when the cow comes in heat. So if you do artificial insemination, you know, it tells you when you can breed them. And of course, they've got the collar. So when they go in the robot, it, all the computer reads their collar, it knows who it is mm -hmm. and how much feed to give them and stuff like that. The computer saves that information. So we talked a lot about a robot and I'm sure you guys are wondering what that is. We're going to go there next and talk about the robot, how it connects to these really cool collars. Very fancy. We'll see what the robot's all about. So the cows we talked about have the collars. When they go in the robot, they've got a, there's a reader over top of the robot. It reads it and it pulls all the cow's information to know if it's time to milk. If it's not time for her to milk, it'll just open the gate and let her out. If it is time, it gives her a little bit of feed and it starts cleaning her. And it's got them brushes that have a peroxide water mix. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you about that. <laughs> and then it puts, the milkers on them. And the robots are different than the parlor because they milk one quarter at a time. You'll notice when one quarter's done, it pulls that cup off. In the parlor, all four come off at the same time. When the cow is, all four are done, it'll spray a iodine-based dip on their teats and then it just lets her out. And then the robot will back flush the lines and sanitize and they've got steamers They'll blow steam in them to kill bacteria and stuff. And that's the milking process. When the cow goes in, the average for the herd is like seven minutes and 40 seconds. But I mean, some cows can be in there three and a half minutes and some can be in there 15 minutes. If the milk's bad, it'll divert the milk down the drain and then it'll shut down and wash the lines out so that it doesn't contaminate the next cow. 
So this is the tank room where the milk stays. The milk comes from the robots in this pipeline right here. And it comes in, goes through one of these filters and then it goes over here. It'll go in that big tank and it'll be cooled down to 38 degrees and there's an agitator in there that keeps it spinning so it won't separate. We have to have two tanks because with robots you're milking all the time. This is the Juno? <laughs> and is it, so it, this is the track? These metal strips. It has an ultrasound on top that goes off the feed rail. So it drives in a straight line up through here and it's got a sensor on the bottom, it hits some metal strips and it'll turn, come in, hit that strip and go up to the charger. Oh, okay. So it's kind of like a Roomba. Yeah. It's like a Roomba for pushing feed. <laughs> yeah, you program it, your route, so it'll do what the route tells it to do. And it just drives down through there pushing, it kind of spins, like spins as it goes and it just pushes the feet over and it gets to the end. It'll drive across and it'll come up through here. It's nice when it works. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of feed, we're gonna talk a little bit about what you guys feed, what you put in it and why. Can you show me? Uh, yes. Uh, this ration consists of, uh, per cow per day is, uh, we feed 45 pounds of corn silage, 21 pounds of chopped wheat silage. You see that there and uh, 17 and a half pounds of a custom grain mix that we get from, uh, we have a nutritionist that balances this feed for our cows. Uh, it's got distillery grain in it, soybean meal, cotton seed, maybe a little bit of corn gluten and other stuff. And it's got a one shot mineral pack. So the cows, you know, they take a bite of this, they get everything that they need to produce milk. Currently, I think we're feeding for the cows to produce about 90 pounds of milk, and we're staying around 96 pounds to 100 pounds of milk per a cow day. per day. Yes. Nice. Going a little bit off topic, how does that milk production compare to years ago, like whenever you first started? Doubled. Really? Yeah. We was happy if we could, back, you know, 20, 20, 25 years ago, if you was getting 50 pounds per cow per day, you was setting the woods on fire. You was happy but now you will be out of business. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we talked a little bit about feed. Feed goes in the front end. Let's talk a little bit about what comes out the back end. <laughs> so watching the alley get cleaned up, can you tell me a little bit about where your manure goes and what you use it for? So the manure goes to the end of the barn and there's a gutter it falls in and then it flows into a little hole and we have to pump it to the pond. Twice a year, we hire some people to come in and pump the manure pond out onto the land where we're going to put our crops. And the farms that we use the cow manures, we usually don't have to buy any fertilizer. The soil samples say it's good enough without buying extra fertilizer. I'm a nerd for manure type stuff because I worked for hog farmers through high school and I like compost and all of that. I think it's so neat how this is a closed loop system. This manure is getting scraped into an alley, put into a pit where it stays. It's not going to leach off into waterways or end up in a river. It's staying in that pit. And then these farmers will take this manure, which is not useless. There's a ton of value in it. They will spread it back on the field. You're getting your micronutrients, everything else you could possibly want. And it's feeding next year's corn crop or wheat crop, whatever's turning into feedstock. So they're taking the manure, making it a healthy plant, taking a healthy plant, turning it into food, and it's just a giant cycle. It's amazing how fine-tuned they've got this system uh, that feeds the whole country. I mean, it is, the farmers are doing so much out here, people don't even realize. They just go to the grocery store shelf and get a gallon of milk or get some food without seeing how many steps go into making sure it shows up to that grocery store safe and healthy and ready to go. Well, that concludes the tour of Compton Dairy. I hope you guys learned as much and had as much fun as we did. 
I did learn a lot. That was cool, getting to check out a dairy farm like that. It was a lot of fun, and Ben and Tony were great. That is all for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out all my other social media accounts, link down below, and check out our show called Dirt Poor on Acres TV, and we will talk to you guys next time. If you Bye. liked it, let us know in the comments below. Bye.